Hey guys and welcome back to Clinical Physio with me, Phil Richards. Today we're going to be talking about passive range of motion testing for the thoracic spine. The purpose of this is to test when the active contractile structures are not involved in the process. If you're not sure why we test passive range of motion, we suggest you look at our video titled Why Test Passive Range of Motion for the full understanding of the clinical reasoning process. So when we're thinking about this passive testing, we want to consider three things, pain, range, and end feel. A small note on some of the movements not included in passive testing. We have excluded flexion, extension, and side flexions. And the reason we've done this is it's very, very difficult to isolate a true passive test in these. They are, of course, included in the active range of motion testing. Right, let's get to our main video. Let's get clinical. So now we're going to test passive range of motion of the thoracic spine into left rotation and right rotation. So as a therapist, we're going to stand behind our patient for this one. Our patient is going to be in a sitting position. We're going to ask them to put their arms across their chest so we have a way of rotating them. And we're going to put one hand on the anterior shoulder and the other hand is going to come behind, sort of between the spine and the medial border of the scapula. This is where we're roughly on the back really. And from here, we can rotate our patient round. We can move with our body to follow them round so we're not straining ourselves. And we can add that end feel over pressure on there. Presuming that we're not seriously irritating or provocating their symptoms before that, in which case we may need to stop depending on how the patient feels with it. So we've done that. And then we need to look at our pain range and end feel. So because we're trying to isolate non-contractile structures with this, we're thinking about all the things that aren't contracting. But in truth, there is a lot of active movement still going on with this. So could we truly isolate that? Maybe not. But maybe if we compare it to our active one compared to this one and we see a difference, then maybe we can isolate it a bit more. But primarily, primarily and classically, we're thinking about ligamentous structures and the joints that are being involved with this. In terms of our range, we're thinking around 25 to 40 degrees. And the end feel should be very much elastic. It's ligamentous and muscular tissues that you're getting to the end. It's not like a hard end feel that you should get from a, like a closed pack position on an elbow joint. So you expect a, a decent amount of kind of a springiness, but it's thought of as an elastic end feel. If the patient has tightness and dysfunction, you may find it's a lot tighter. So we've done left rotation, so now we're going to do right rotation. So if we ask Marie to put her arms across her chest. And so last time we came across this way to the left, so we're just gonna repeat the same procedure, but the other way. So this hand's gonna come onto the anterior shoulder here. This other hand's gonna come back, posterior scapula, a little bit more towards the spine. And we're gonna move our body weight, keep ourselves aligned, add that rotation and that overpressure there. So to summarize this video on passive range of movement of the thoracic spine, first, complete passive range of movement with the patient in a sitting position. Test passive left thoracic rotation and passive right thoracic rotation. When completing your passive tests, be aware of your handling and for each movement, make a note of pain, range and end feel. And that concludes our video on passive range of motion testing for the thoracic spine. From here, we want to compare our passive range of motion testing results with our active range of motion testing results to see if it's more likely that a non-contractile or a contractile lesion is causing our patient's pain. And this together with your other tests, such as your resisted tests and your palpation, can confirm your patient diagnosis. If you're not sure why we test active range of motion or passive range of motion, then please check out our videos called Why We Test Active Range of Motion and Why Test Passive Range of Motion. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon on Clinical Physio.